Everyone, welcome to the show. I have a bunch of updates to share about Donald Trump's coup clown. So first up is election denier Tina Peters. Peters, you might recall, she is the former Colorado County clerk. Um, she was supposed to go to trial this Friday for allegedly providing illegal access to voting equipment after the 2020 election. So she was recently on a right wing podcast. And here's what she had to say when they asked her about the charges and the upcoming trial. How does your counsel think you're going to it's going to fare for you? Well, you know, obviously there we're, we're always wanting uh, an acquittal because I'm not guilty. Um, first of all, I've, I'm almost 70 years old. I don't even have a parking ticket, a speeding ticket. I've never had any run in with the law. Uh, they f basically framed me. And I was found guilty of two misdemeanors, one for lying to a judge that I hadn't recorded when I was sitting there in in the court, in the gallery, in the court uh, when my uh, chief deputy w was in, in court. So she obviously dodged the question. The two charges to which she referred had nothing at all to do with her upcoming trial. Those charges were already adjudicated and Peters was found guilty. She was sentenced to probation for that part of it. And so she didn't answer that question about her upcoming trial because she can't answer their question. The case against Peters is about as open and shut as you can possibly get. And remember, she snuck these people into this area to steal the election data. Peters allegedly gave them a key card from a former contract employee. If she really thought that she wasn't doing anything wrong, she would have just walked them in the front door. She would have just told everyone what was going down, what she was doing, and why they were there, right? Plus, they have two of her co-defendants who took cooperation deals. So they're going to give up the goods on her in the trial. So Peters tried one last ditch effort this week to try to delay her trial and the appeals court shut her down. So what did she do? what they do? <laughs> As Peter Navarro would say, let me see if I can get it to play. What did they do? So what'd she do? what they do? <laughs> she went and she withdrew her attorney. She, she fired her attorneys. So jury selection was supposed to start Friday. And in her pretrial hearing on Tuesday, she announced she's ditching her legal team. So this is now the second legal team that she's firing. At some point, you would think Peters might realize she's the problem. She is the common denominator in all of this. It's not about her attorneys. I don't know if that's really what she thinks or if this is just a delay tactic, but this is complete BS. This trial has been delayed forever. And the judge just gave her another six months. They said, oh, you can have six months for your attorneys to get up to speed on the case. So it's now scheduled to begin July 29th. Absolutely ridiculous. Next up is news regarding the Smartmatic defamation lawsuit against OAN. I shared last week that OAN was caught with a list of Smartmatic employee passwords. And now there's this new court filing and in it Smartmatic revealed those passwords were sent to a generic OAN email address. The email also contained, in addition to this spreadsheet with all of these passwords, there was a bunch of information about Dominion Voting Systems executive Eric Coomer, so different company. OAN President Charles Herring is the one who ended up responding to the email, and he wrote, quote, Thank you. If you come across an addition information, please pass along. So there's nothing wrong with a journalist asking for more information, right? To dig up new information to share with their viewers. But the person who sent this information asked OAN to keep the details, quote, quiet for now. So clearly not about journalism. And Herring ended up forwarding the information to Trump attorney Sidney Powell and my pillow man, Mike Lindell. So obviously, they had no intention of using this information for journalistic purposes. This was just to help Donald Trump steal the election. So in their legal filing, Smartmatic told the court that OAN, quote, 
participated in a crime by soliciting, reviewing, and disseminating information designed to assist bad actors with hacking into Smartmatic's email communication. And, quote, OANN's internal and external discussions about the stolen passwords represent circumstantial evidence that OANN intended to harm Smartmatic and intended to undermine people's confidence in the 2020 election. And speaking of the Kraken lady who received this information, Sidney Powell, there's a new book out and it details Trump's attempted coup. In this book, they talk about that insane in the membrane meeting that you guys might remember. It took place in the White House. It was mid-December of 2020. The book is called Find Me the Votes, and the authors say that attorney Sidney Powell hatched this plan, which we kind of knew about, but we didn't know all the details. She hatched a plan for intel operatives to go break into election offices and seize voting equipment. And then Powell told others in this meeting that Trump needs to issue them preemptive pardons. So these operatives who are going to go break in and steal voting equipment, she wanted him to issue these preemptive pardons so they couldn't be prosecuted for those crimes. So she clearly knew these were crimes or she wouldn't have asked for a preemptive pardon. I mean, this plan was so batshit crazy that America's defendant, Rudy Giuliani, shut this down. When your idea is too crazy for Giuliani, you might want to check yourself into a psych ward. I'm just saying. <laughs> and speaking of crazy Rudy, he recently said he's proud of what he did. He's proud of it. He would do it again on his Twitter show that he does. He told his audience, quote, I do it all over again, every step, because I look at the mirror at night. If I can be happy with myself that that day that I did what God wanted me to do and served my country, I'm a happy man. I say to myself, my father would be proud of me. <laughs> I don't think so, unless your father's a piece of shit too. <laughs> But I love how they use God to justify everything. That is not God in your head, Rudy. That's not God telling you to commit crimes. Kind of the opposite, the antithesis of the Bible. Anyway, it was just revealed through Giuliani's bankruptcy filings. He owes nearly $40,000 in golf fees. <laughs> I mean, the guy is clearly destitute and he's out spending money on golf. He still also owes his former attorney for almost $400,000, and he owes $30,000 in unpaid fees to a phone company. Now, I could have sworn these people were the party of personal responsibility, right? But they don't pay their bills. Not Trump, not Giuliani, not Steve Bannon. Why doesn't Giuliani just pull himself up by, him, by his bootstraps? Isn't that where Republicans say the money is all hidden? And I don't get it. Like, is it supposed to be under the boots or are you sitting on it? Like, I've never really understood where this hidden money comes from when you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. I mean, does it fall out of your ass? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so Giuliani is drowning in debt. He's drowning in legal judgments. So now he's saying he might sue Trump. He might sue him for all of the work he did after the 2020 election for which he never got paid. And Giuliani recently mentioned this in a court filing. This was also related to his bankruptcy. So we'll see. I, I doubt it. I can't believe that he would ever cut the cord because Trump is all he has left. Right? This is his last gasp at relevancy. Next up, speaking of which, is sloppy Steve Bannon. As you probably know, Bannon stiffed his attorneys as well. So they sued him for nearly half a million dollars in unpaid legal fees. It's going around. And now they're trying to force him to turn over his financial records as part of the discovery process in this legal fight. Bannon, though, had to admit in the court filings that he sent in that his bank records might contain evidence of a crime. <laughs> so Bannon, of course, 
He was indicted in the state of New York for allegedly ripping off Trump supporters. We say allegedly, we know, right? This was the whole we build the wall scam. And in a recent court filing for the case involving his former law firm, Bannon's new attorney wrote, quote, DHC's taking of post-judgment discovery from Mr. Bannon poses a significant risk of compromising Mr. Bannon's Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination. So DHC is his previous law firm who's suing him. It's Davidoff, Hutcher, and Citrin. And uh, Bannon's new attorney is trying to prevent him not only from turning over these financial documents, but also for sitting for a, de a, a deposition. And for the same reason, they think he might incriminate himself. So we'll see. Next is news about, uh, it's related to at least the Georgia Rico case. Two Republican state senators are trying to change Georgia's Rico law for Trump. Georgia State Senators Brandon Beach and Colton Moore are trying to amend the statute to try to remove language that allowed Fonnie Willis to charge Trump and his allies with this RICO violation. And they want to make these changes retroactive. They're doing this specifically so the charges against Trump will be dropped. This is the law and order party, ladies and gentlemen. If your guy commits crimes, you know, literally tries to subvert democracy, attempts a coup against the United States. Just change the laws. Just change it so he can't get in trouble. Is so vile. These people are reprehensible. And then in related news, Georgia's Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones is now accused of trying to access election computers in Butts County, Colorado, um, Georgia. This was after the 2020 election. And no, it's not a joke. It's actually called Butts County. <laughs> it's where JLo's from. Don't you know? Anyway, <laughs> Jones was the state senator at the time that he did this. And he represented Butts County, or he was a state senator. So an email is obtained by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. An official mentions that Jones wanted to bring in a, quote, forensic analyst to inspect all of these election computers. So a man named Ryan German responded. He, at the time, was the general counsel for the Georgia Secretary of State. And German said, quote, this would be against the law. They are not allowed to give an unauthorized person access to their EMS server. That would be a huge security breach. So there is no evidence that the Butts County equipment was ever compromised, but you know this is how off the rails these Republicans were, how they fell for Trump's lies, were willing to break the law for him. And this Jones guy, like I said, he is now the Lieutenant Governor. So he is one heartbeat away from rigging the election for Trump in the swing state of Georgia. We all know Governor Brian Kemp did the right thing. Whatever else we may think of him, he did the right thing. He followed the law. Can we really trust this new guy, this lieutenant governor, to abide by the law if something happens to Kemp? So that's scary, and we need to keep an eye on it. We need to keep Kemp healthy. <laughs> Send him kale. Send him lots of kale and quinoa. All right. I will let you know when I hear more. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Don't be shady. If you can donate, truly appreciate it. It helps to keep the show going. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.